He earlier bought items such as knives, rubbish bags, and cleaning products. Daniel Sancho Branchalo tried to cover up the crime by laying about where he stayed. He double booked his accommodation and had it all planned. This is Daniel Sancho Branchalo, a 29-year-old chef who lives in Madrid, Spain. On July 31st, 2023, he and his boyfriend, 44-year-old Edwin Arrieta Artiga from Colombia, arrived in Copacñan, where they had planned to stay till August 4th. But by August 1st, 2023, Daniel had bludgeoned Edwin to death, dismembered his body, thrown his head in the ocean, and gone out to party with his two side lovers. What makes this murder especially gruesome, and what led him to take this horribly dark path? Welcome to Crime City. This is the full story of Daniel Sancho Branchalo, the man who dismembered his lover and threw his head in the ocean. This story begins with body parts discovered in a garbage dump. Trash collectors in Kopangyang are used to seeing all sorts of weird things disposed of. In fact, they had seen so many strange things while picking up trash at garbage dumps that they had built resistance against them. They couldn't be phased by anything anymore, or so they thought. Nothing in their years of picking up trash will prepare them for the grisly sight they were about to witness. August 3rd, 2023 began as usual for the trash collectors that worked at Mu 4 of Copanyan Municipal District. They had gotten their truck ready and headed their merry way to their location, whistling happy tunes and trading garbage jokes. They got to the dump at Mu 4 and alighted from their trucks and immediately started picking up trash. After they had loaded enough trash into their trucks, they headed to other locations on their route. Among the trash they picked up was a peculiar green fertilizer bag. The trash collectors were completely clueless as to what was inside, but they soon found out. By 12.30 p.m. on August 3rd, the trash collectors were unloading the truck when they picked up a fertilizer sack that was heavy. No, they were used to picking up heavy trash bags at dumps, but this was unusually heavy, and the smell was rancid. Something didn't seem right about that bag, so they decided to do something they'd never done. They decided to open up the fertilizer bag. As they placed the bag down to open up, the smell coming from the bag got even worse, even to the point of almost discouraging them to open it, but they had to find out. When they opened the bag, what they saw would haunt their dreams for years to come. They were confronted with a sawed-off pelvis, and chills immediately went down their spine. But that wasn't all. They would see something else, something even more disturbing. In the fertilizer sack, nestled underneath the pelvis, the trash collectors would discover intestines. The intestines, when weighed, came up to five kilograms. The trash collectors were horrified, and they knew they had to alert the police. When they arrived at the police station, they were immediately confronted with questions. Where was the rest of the body? Was it just one body? Where had they found the fertilizer bag? They had no response for the police because they had visited a lot of dump sites that day and didn't know where exactly they had picked up the bag, nor did they find any other body parts. The police knew they had their work cut out for them. If one body part was found, surely others were there or close by. So they retraced the steps of the trash collection to find the rest of the body parts. The police, along with forensic officers and medical staff from Kopanyang Hospital, headed out in search of the rest of the body. They had searched a number of dump sites along the trash collector's route, but had come up empty. Their last location was Mu 4. If they didn't find them there, they might not be able to crack the case. But as luck, or whatever else you might call it, will have it, Mu 4 was the location they had been searching for. After hours of sifting through trash, they hit the jackpot. In a black trash bag, the police found two legs. There was something else. In the same bag was a black t-shirt, a pair of shorts, and a pair of red boxer shorts. The police were confused. Did the clothes belong to the victim, or did they belong to someone else? A number of things were immediately apparent to the police. The victim had been dead at least 24 hours before the parts were found, and the dismembered body did not belong to a Thai man. The size of the pelvis was not natural for a Thai male, so they concluded it belonged to a foreigner. Unbeknownst to them at the time, the body parts belonged to Colombian plastic surgeon Edwin Arrieta Artiga. Edwin Arrieta Artiga was a 44-year-old plastic surgeon who was born and raised in Lorica, Colombia. Edwin was a dedicated plastic surgeon who was somewhat famous for his skill and hard work in his hometown of Lorica. 
Edwin had learned grit and hard work from his parents. His father was a man dedicated to his craft of fixing radios and television. His mother, a retired school teacher, loved by the people she taught. Edwin always knew he would be successful. He had to be. He was a product of parents who valued their work and gave themselves to it. And he was. The people who worked with him praised him for his skill and precision. In 2022, Edwin met a young man on Instagram. His name, Daniel Sancho Bronchalo. Daniel lived in Madrid, Spain, and was a chef who had a YouTube channel. He was also the son of famous Spanish actor Rodolfo Sancho Aguirre, most known for playing the father of a killer in the 2011 Spanish film No Rest for the Wicked. Little did he know that life would imitate art a decade later. Daniel's mother is also a famous Spanish actor named Silvia Bronchalo. Together, they raised Daniel in Madrid, Spain. Daniel had a more than comfortable upbringing. Although his parents were very young when they had him, they provided for him and made sure he lacked nothing. Fast forward 28 years, Daniel met Edwin online and they immediately hit it off. But as their flirting progressed into a relationship, Daniel left out one tiny detail. He wasn't single. Daniel had a girlfriend he had been dating for four years who lived in Indonesia. And when Daniel and Edwin celebrated a year together, they came into a problem. You see, Daniel decided to make things official with his girlfriend by proposing to her. She said yes, but he had one problem, Edwin. Edwin had the power to ruin him if he found out he had a girlfriend this whole time. Daniel knew he needed to handle breaking up with Edwin delicately. If Edwin even suspected Daniel had a woman on the side, he could tumble the whole house of cards. But how to do it without tipping Edwin off about his relationship, Daniel wondered. He decided to just approach it as a regular breakup. He'd tell Edwin he didn't want to pursue a relationship with him anymore without giving too much detail. And so Daniel broke up with Edwin. There was, again, one tiny problem. They had been happy in their relationship before the breakup. Edwin didn't buy it. He knew something else was going on, and he was determined to find out what it was, even if it killed. And unfortunately for Edwin, that would prove true in more ways than one. When Daniel told Edwin he wanted to break things off, he expected some resistance, but what he didn't expect was the outward rejection of his attempt at breaking up. Edwin wasn't buying it. He refused to accept Daniel's explanations and demanded to know the truth. Daniel eventually confessed the truth to Edwin in hopes that he would accept the breakup and move on, but his heart was shattered and he wanted to make Daniel pay. Edwin began to threaten Daniel he threatened to release photos of them together online so his parents would see who he truly was. Daniel was scared. His parents were famous, and him being gay, sadly, could destroy their careers. He knew he had to do something to make Daniel see reason. Shut him up for good. Daniel came up with a plan. He suggested he and Edwin meet up in person to talk about their relationship. Edwin agreed, and their journeys brought them to Copanyan, where Daniel would meet a quick and brutal death. Edwin booked a room at a hotel in Copanyan from July 31st to August 3rd. They had also planned to attend the full moon party while they were there, except Edwin never got to see the day. You see, as much as Daniel was planning to convince Edwin not to expose him, he had another plan, a more sinister plan. By 3.30 p.m., Edwin arrived at Copanyan and Daniel was there to pick him up. They made their way to the hotel to relax after a long flight. After a few hours of relaxing, they went out to explore the gorgeous sights of Copanyan. They went to a restaurant and then went out to Rin Beach to enjoy the calm of the ocean. It was a good day spent together. Edwin was happy. He had his lover back, or so he thought. Little did he know the horrific plans Daniel had for him. In a truly disturbing move, Daniel had gone to a nearby store to purchase some items he would need. He bought rubber gloves so as not to leave any prints. He bought a saw to cut up the body. And lastly, he bought supplies to clean up after he was done. Back at the hotel, Daniel began to convince Edwin to agree to the breakup so he could go ahead to marry his girlfriend. Edwin again refused, but he not only refused, he proceeded to threaten to expose Daniel if he went ahead with the wedding. Daniel felt trapped. I am guilty, but I was Edwin's hostage. He held me hostage. It was a glass cage, but it was a cage. Daniel was seething and he couldn't take it anymore. He knew what he had to do. He said that if the talk wasn't successful, he thought he had to kill him because he had the partner waiting to get married. Daniel punched Edwin hard. 
Edwin staggered back, but quickly recovered, and bit Daniel's hand, but then Daniel hit him over the head, and again and again, until he was no longer breathing. Edwin was gone, and Daniel no longer had to live in fear of being exposed, so he went to work dismembering Edwin's body. He chopped up his head first, then went to work on the rest of the body. You see, being a chef, Daniel was pretty familiar with a knife. He chopped Edwin's body into 14 parts and started shoving them into a suitcase he brought with him. But there was a problem. Daniel had miscalculated. All of Edwin wasn't fitting into the suitcase. He had to quickly figure out how to dispose of the rest of him. You see, Daniel had initially planned to shove Edwin into a suitcase and dump him in the ocean. But his plan was failing terribly, and Daniel had to think fast on his feet. He decided to put the rest of him in trash bags. Once he was done, he picked up the parts in the trash bags and threw them at a nearby garbage dump. Then, his next plan involved renting a kayak and paddling the rest of Edwin out to sea. But there was another problem. The women he wanted to rent a kayak from, Tuk and Kanda, were refusing to rent him the kayak. They were concerned it was too late to venture out to sea, and they didn't want any trouble if Daniel didn't return. Daniel was getting frantic. He had body parts in a suitcase in his hotel room, and his plan was coming apart before his very eyes. He began to sweat on a cold night. The women noticed something was off, so they denied him. But then Daniel offered them something they couldn't refuse. Daniel offered to buy their kayak for $1,000. That's a lot of money, and the women couldn't turn it down. Daniel bought the kayak and headed out to Salat Beach to dispose of Edwin's body. When he got back, he was relieved. His plan was working, and he would never get caught. Daniel got to work scrubbing the hotel room of any trace of blood. He rinsed whatever part was scattered around the hotel room down the drain. When he was done, he took a shower and went out to the full moon party with two women he had met earlier, like nothing happened. When he got back from a night of partying, Daniel checked out of the hotel and checked into a different one. On August 3rd, 2023, after Edwin's body parts had been found at the garbage dump, the police did a DNA test and discovered their victim was Edwin Arietta Artiga. Further investigation led them to discover that Edwin had arrived at Copanyan on July 31st and had booked a room at a nearby hotel. As their investigation proceeded, they had a most unusual visit that set in motion some bizarre events. Two days after he bludgeoned his lover to death, Daniel walked into the Copanyan police station to report him missing. When he came into the police station, the police noticed a few things. Daniel was weirdly nervous, which was unusual since he only came in to report a missing person. Daniel also had scratches and bruises all over his body, fresh ones for that matter. Something was not adding up so they detained him for questioning. Daniel told the police a few truths mixed with so many lies. He told them he had arrived before Edwin on July 31st, and he went to pick Edwin up on August 2nd. According to Daniel, they went out exploring, and Edwin went missing shortly after they got back. The police sensed there was more to the story, but they didn't have enough to hold him, so they let him go, but not before revoking his visa and seizing his passport so he couldn't leave. The police went on with their investigation and discovered more shocking details. They found a CCTV video of Daniel and Edwin on a bike on August 1st, which meant Daniel was lying when he said Edwin arrived on August 2nd. It also meant Daniel was the last person to see Edwin alive. The police discovered that Daniel had booked a separate hotel way before his arrival to Copanyan to make it look like he and Edwin weren't together, but there was more. They also found surveillance images of Daniel buying a bunch of bizarre things to conceal a body. It was clear Daniel had something to do with Edwin's murder, so they brought him in for further questioning. The jig was up but Daniel still stuck to his previous story. The more evidence the police showed him, the more stressed Daniel got. Daniel Sancho Branchalo tried to cover up the crime by laying about where he stayed. He double booked his accommodation and had it all planned, as he earlier bought items such as knives, rubbish bags, and cleaning products. After hours of questioning, Daniel confessed to the most horrific crime. Daniel was subsequently arrested and charged with premeditated murder. He was forced by the police to take them to places where he had dumped Edwin's body so they could recover the rest of his parts. Daniel was arraigned to court on August 7th 
2023 and is expected to face the death penalty.